Well, I'm back on a site that's been good to me. This is up the mansion where I found the gold ring a few weeks ago. And this time, I'm using the 13 inch DTEC Ultimate Coil with the E-Track. I know what sort of depth I get targets in in this field. So it'll be interesting to see if I get them any deeper with this new coil. I've got approximately two hours, so in that time I should get a fair idea of how it performs. What's that? Uh, oh, it's a shilling. Queen Elizabeth II shilling from 1956. That gave a signal as if it was right on the top. I thought it was literally on the top. I think it was reading 1212 on the E track, but it was oh six inches down, and the signal strength and quality from that was unbelievable. I think this is just another ring pull, but listen to that, reading 1217. Fifteen, nineteen, eleven, thirteen, twelve, nineteen, and it's tripping out a little bit because the sensitivity is quite high. Set on twenty eight. That's a very clear signal. Depth gauge is reading halfway down, so it says it's about six inches. And we're about there. So I'm going to give that a dig and see what it is. Well, from about four inches, possibly five, on end, we've got a ring pull. That gave an absolutely slamming signal. Now here's the one I'm reasonably excited about. It's reading 11.45. Twelve forty-four, so the the conductive reading's quite consistent. Actually, the ferrous reading's consistent as well between eleven and twelve, so that's good. It's reading is three quarters of the way down on the depth gauge as well, so I'm hoping this one's silver, but it might be a modern two pence. Gonna get dug. Oh, God, the ground's hard. It's looking like a coin ball in there. Yeah, that looks like a coin ball to me. Please, silver, not copper. Silver, silver, silver. What's it going to be? Oh man. Well, it's not often I'm right. And sometimes I don't like being right. It's a modern two pence. Another lovely loud signal, this time reading 12.32. And we've got a lovely little key. Very rare I find keys for some reason. And yet, unless they're like Yale keys or something like that. But that's a nice one. Very nice. This one was an incredibly noisy 7.32. Ah, it's a crushed bottle top. That was really noisy. That's got to be, I don't know, six, seven inches down maybe. Couldn't have walked past that signal, but sadly it wasn't anything decent. Here's a signal I'm extremely excited about. Hard to see, but it's reading right in the not not right in the top corner, but just off. It's reading 134, 135, 138, 1441. So it's jumping around a bit, but it does say allegedly it's eight inches deep. So it's going to get a dig. Ha 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 ha! 
It's a nice cork. Well, that said it was eight inches deep. It'd be lucky if it's four. Looks like a little mini coin ball. I'm hoping it's not a modern one pence. Yeah. It's a modern one pence. Now that looks like a coin ball to me and it came up from probably about seven inches deep. There's a bit of discoloration which makes us think it might either be a penny or a half penny. I think it was reading 12.35 but it was jumping around quite a lot. I'm thinking half penny. Or at least I'm fearing half penny. Uh, God, I'm right again. Another one where I don't like being right. It's my old nemesis. That's reading 12.39. Beautiful, clean signal. I think this one is an old penny. That's my prediction. It says it's about six inches deep, so it's gonna get dug. Ah! Well, depth-wise, it was pretty much bang on. It was about six to seven inches, but it's only a bottle cap. An absolutely banging signal, maybe six inches deep. Reading 12.35. Gotta be Mary or some other saintly woman. I'm not too good on saints and all that. If I've got any Christians watching that can help me out. That's a cross, a V and an M. And I presume that means something as well. The thing I'm most pleased about this find is, not that it's, well, it's not a very good find to be honest. The thing I'm most pleased about is the fact that it was down probably about six inches and gave an absolutely loud, clear, perfectly diggable signal. Give an absolutely cracking signal. I presumed it was right on the top. Hello. Oh, that's got a lovely patina to it. It's an old half penny from 1932. So that's George the Fifth. Oh, that side's scabby. Yeah, good six inches, absolutely cracking signal. This one is approximately two feet from the last dig and it's reading 9.37, another absolutely slamming signal. So I'm gonna give it the curse of a live dig. Watch it be a bloody bottle top. It's a coin ball, that's a good sign. Do you know I keep lying down to shoot these portions of video and I'm sure I'm covered in sheep muck. It, it absolutely stinks. I'm thinking modern half penny. Uh, I'm right again. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Now from that coil, this gave exactly the sort of signal I would expect it to give. Really loud, clear signal from possibly seven or eight inches deep. So it's a good old depth for a tiny little copper coin. It should easily hit these to nine inches though. I haven't found any that deep today, but there's no doubt in my mind if this was another couple of inches deep, I would have easily found it. So far, the coil is working great. Nice, clear, diggable signals, just as I would expect.
Mm -hmm. Hello, that's the first old penny, George the fifth. Oh, that's quite nice, that side. That's 19... 1922 by the looks of it. In pretty good condition. Now that was yet another target that I was convinced was right on the top. It was reading 12... what was it? 12.45 maybe? Or 12.44? I was convinced that was a modern two pence right on the top. So I only dug down about that far to start with. And then it became apparent that this coin was nowhere near that. It actually came up from about six to seven inches down. So if you are using that coil, just be aware that if you use the same program as me with a four-tone ferrous, with the settings that I've got, which can be found in my previous videos, and I'll also put it in the video description, if you're using those settings, you can get tricked into thinking that the target is much nearer the top than it is. It just gives such strong, loud, good, hard signals with that coil. Now this signal is one of those ones. Yeah, like that. It's hitting on the bottom of the screen, but it's also jumping up to the top. And it's spending a lot of its time in this top quarter of the screen, which is always a good place. It's a tricky one, but it's going to get dug. Well, it was about six inches. That's what the, the depth gauge said as well. Christ, there's something in there. Oh, hello, hello. Look at that. That didn't really give that good a signal, but it was down Hmm, seven inches perhaps, if I'm being very generous. 1943 sixpence. In really good condition. I'm pleased with that. That was one of those signals where sometimes you take a chance and sometimes you don't. If there's a signal that's spending maybe 75% of its time in the top quarter and just diving down at the iron occasionally, I will always dig it. Sometimes even if it's 50% up in the top and 50% down below, I'll sometimes dig them because it, an extra inch of depth can really make a difference to how it reads on the E-Track. If I buried that an extra inch, I'd probably find that the signal spent more time in iron than it did where silver hits. So I'm lucky with that one. Another inch, certainly another two inches and I might not have got that. It took me less than a minute to dig that hole. Actually, it probably just took about 10 seconds. 10 seconds to dig the hole. If I'd farted on and tried it from 10 different angles to try and get a better signal and then decided not to dig it and walk away, I would have wasted my time. If you think it possibly is gonna be a good target, just dig it. I always do. And it's paid off that time. Excellent. Well, there's a signal that's pretty much iron. It's reading in the bottom of the screen also jumping up to the top occasionally, maybe 25% of the time. Because the sixpence I dug was here, and this signal is very close, it possibly is iron. And that's maybe what was cocking up that sixpence signal, because normally they would read pretty true at that depth. So with this one I've got two options. Chances are it's deep iron. It's certainly reading deep, and it's reading mostly down the bottom of the screen. But I'm getting the odd high tone, and because I've just dug silver from there, and this other signal's here, I'm going to dig this. I'll probably be disappointed, but it could be very deep silver. We shall see. I'm going to take that out. Here's the hole I've just dug. I'm going to dig here. Lift that out. That's the culprit. 
it looks like a rusty lump of iron. Now the sixpence, if you remember, was just in here. That's what was giving that dodgy signal. Iron. That tells me that that was the reason why that one didn't give a good signal. That was there, sixpence was here. Still gave a diggable signal, so I'm pleased with that. God, there's another one down about seven or eight inches that I was convinced was on the top. Uh, oh, it's a half penny. An old hapenny. Which is exceptionally flat. <laughs> oh no, there we go. There's Britannia on the back. I'm not sure we'll get a date off this one. Uh, looks like 1878, I think. 18, possibly 1888, so that'll be a Victorian one. Oh yeah, there's Victoria coming up. Yeah, you can just about make it out. Very flat. 18, yeah, 1888. From way down there, so that was another banging, banging, banging signal. Now I've just dug that half penny from just outside the shot here. Picked the detector up, swung it again, got another good signal, and this looks like an imprint from a coin. There's the other side, but where's the coin? Gotta be somewhere in here. Oh, there he is. Yep. Another halfpenny. I would imagine that one's possibly Victorian as well. Uh, 1890. So that's another Victorian one. Very good. Another cracking signal. I think I would call this one a bouncy ring pull signal. And it looks like another little religious type thingy. Oh, it's actually got some colour on that one. No, nah, I can't read it. It may even be in Latin, I'm not sure. But that's another one of those thingies, just like I found last time. Well, this one gave another cracking response. And looks like a hapenny. Very, very worn hapenny. But from the signal that gave, I could have sworn it was just an inch or two from the top. And it's actually oh, six inches, maybe, maybe seven. What a great response. Well, this one was reading 10, 12, and I thought I was digging a ring pull, but this is a pretty big coin ball. So hopefully there's a coin in here. Yeah, there is indeed. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a silver shilling, but it's a shilling from George the Sixth from 1950. That's interesting. It's more or less on end, that one. What's that? Uh, I'd like to think it's an old penny, but it looks too small. Ah, it's actually a George III half penny. Got one, two, three up there. Georgius three, DG. Ah. We'll have the date down here, Britannia sitting, but I cannot read any of that. That was a canny depth, maybe it's hmm, eight, nine inches on end. Still gave a cracking signal of 12.42, and it's an area where there's a heck of a lot of iron. I almost didn't dig it because there was so much iron around it. Luckily I dug it. It was pretty much sitting in the middle of the hole, so the pinpointing was pretty accurate as well, so I'm pleased with that. This one's reading 13.09, uh, which is normally where old shillings hit, the post-47 ones. <laughs> I don't believe it. It's another one of those little um, pendant things. That's three I've found in the last two visits, and I still don't know what that symbol means, and I still don't know who that fella or woman is. There you go. Now with this one, I'm hoping very much that there's an old penny or half penny in here. I've got a bit of an imprint here, so there will be something, I think, in here. Ah, oh, there is indeed. That was a canny depth. 
Oh, it's a King Edward. King Edward Penny. So that's from the early half of 1900. 1910. It's slightly bent as well. But that gave a cracking signal. And that probably is about 7 inches down. So it's not massively deep, but it still gave a really, really good signal. And that's the first pre-decimal coin I've had in about 50 digs. In the last hour or so, this is what I've been digging. Absolute trash. One pre-decimal coin and a few pennies and modern half pennies. So it hasn't been very productive. Coin ball from probably 7-8 inches down. Wasn't massively deep. Give a hell of a signal though. And, ooh, get up there. Look at the patina on that. Dark green. I hope the other side's nice. Oh, look at that imprint. What a cracker. No, oh, normally you just get one side that's good and the other side's absolute rubbish, but both sides are very nice. It's ages since I've had a coin with such a nicely developed, beautiful patina as that. It's not an old coin, but it's, it's, it's a nice one. That's good, and that's probably one of the last decent coins I'll dig, because I'm on my way back now. This is reading 1238. That's a two-pound coin. I was going to say it's a dirty lump of silver. I thought that was possibly a florin. But it's actually a two-pound coin. It's ages since I found one of them. That's a decent find. Clean it up, and it'll be spendable. And from the same hole that we've got the two-pound coin... Here's a pound coin. Get it in there. Three quid. And this was reading 1240 and gave a really loud signal. Oh, that looks like it's in good condition. And what came out on end from about six or seven inches, reading 1240, is a George the Fifth penny. It's hardly even got any dirt on it. I'm not sure why the muck hasn't stuck to it, but you'd think that'd come out of somebody's pocket. It hasn't, obviously, because it's all green. It's got a bit of muck in it, but um, that one's 1916. That's in pretty good condition. Okay, so a quick roundup. This is all the spendables. There's probably around about seven pound, maybe eight pounds worth of spendable coins in there. They're all the decimal ones, so post 1973. These are all the pre-decimal. There's quite a few pennies, half pennies, shillings, and the nice sixpence, which is probably the only keeper from this lot. And as far as artifacts go, there's that nice key. There's three little pendants, religious ones, um, and I still have no idea who that is. I'm just going to say Mary, but I may be wrong. Two musket balls and a really cheap chatty ring. Now some of you may be thinking, hold on, I've just watched that whole video and I didn't see him dig a ring. The second hunt was badly affected by the wind and when I came to review a lot of the footage it was terrible. I'm not going to put a video out with a lot of wind noise. I'm not desperate for views. I like to put out quality. I can't watch videos myself with, with a lot of wind noise, with shaky cam. And I'm not going to put those sort of videos out. So I like to make a nice steady video. I don't necessarily show all the finds, but when I don't show all the finds, I'll do a roundup at the end. So then, what do I think of the 13 inch coil? Bear in mind this is not a review. I will be doing a review video on it when I've had another three or four hunts. I don't like to do a video that I class as a review until I've really put something through its paces. I do see a lot of people reviewing things after 10 minutes of use and that's just nonsense. A review video will be coming. But I will give you my initial thoughts on this prolonged field test for the 13 inch coil. So, it's bigger than the stock coil, therefore it covers more ground. It covers two inches more ground. So with every sweep, you're covering two inches more ground all the way around your sweep. Which doesn't sound like much, but considering that you might sweep hundreds and hundreds of times in a hunt, that adds up and that does make a difference to how much ground you can cover. What about the weight of it? Well, to be honest, I didn't notice much of a difference over the 11-inch coil. The E-Track 
is a reasonably heavy machine, especially compared to the Deus, which is feather light. You would probably get a tired arm if you used it all day without any sort of harness. But that said, on these hunts, I didn't use a harness and I didn't notice any difference between this and the 11 inch coil. What I did notice when I was using this 13 inch coil is the balance of the machine wasn't really affected, the weight wasn't really affected when compared to my 18 inch coil. 13 18. That's absolutely massive. And I, I can feel that pulling on my hand just lifting it up to show you. It's a really, really heavy coil. Yes, it does get deep, but it gets deep at a cost. You've got to go really slow and you have to have a harness on when you're using that fella. With this, you don't necessarily have to have a harness on. So I just touched on depth there with the 18 inch coil. This, I haven't dug anything super deep with this, but I did get quite a lot of modern half pennies at about 9 inches, and I also got other coins anywhere between 7 and 9 inches. Excellent, really crisp, clear, diggable signals, good target ID at depth. That's what I get with the big, big coil. So it seems to have the really big coil performance, but the small coil weight. I'm very impressed. Value for money, I think it was 130 odd quid. Bear in mind that I've already got the 11 inch stock coil, 8 by 6 coil and 18 by 15 coil. I use them all for different things, so was there really a need to buy this? Possibly not. I could get extra depth and louder signals from the big, big coil, but I don't like to swing that all the time. It's goddamn heavy. This seems to give me big coil performance from a smaller coil. So as to whether it was worth it, so far, yes. These two hunts that I've just done in particular on the coin shooting site, extremely impressive. This is a very quick video from 11robert11, his channel link is in the video description and this video shows how to connect the waterproof attachment for the Deus control box to your stem. Hello guys, I was watching a, a video by Pond Guru the other day and he's just recently bought the stuff to do underwater hunting with the Deus. And uh, I had all the stuff, but when I seen his setup, I wondered how he had sort of attached the control box. So it sat there. And uh, I remembered when I got the deuce, it had uh, just here. I'll just take it off a second. Ooh. Flip it off, even. Just on this piece here, when it came, it had a, a plate over the top protecting it. So I went out and had a look in the box, and I still had it. So, as you can see, the light's a bit terrible. I've uh, attached it to the waterproof housing, which you can get on eBay. The uh, nose plate, if you haven't got it, they sell them in Regtons for 3 95 I think I saw on the net. And then I just bought some Unibond, 100%. It says it's waterproof, so it shouldn't come off. I've, I've let it set and it seems stuck on there, so unless something drastic happens, it won't be getting lost, but... If so, I've got a cord where I can just tie it. I can clip it in, tie it to the machine. So if it does fall off, we're still going to have it. So that's my version of it. That just clips in there. There you go. And that's that on. 
and I'm ready for hunting. I'm gonna have to try some water hunting. That's what I bought it for, so otherwise it's just a waste of money. Alright, thanks for watching and I hope that's helped a few. Because I knew when I watched the video I was thinking, how has he done that? But that's my version of it. I don't know if it's the same as his. So we'll see. And yes, that is exactly how I did mine as well. Thanks very much to everybody who watched this video. If you click the like button, I love you even more and I wish you good luck. Anybody click the thumbs down button, I don't really care. I make these videos primarily for me. I've got an awful memory and I want to give myself and my children some sort of memories of the hunts that I've done, what I've found, where I've found them, who I've been hunting with. It's just a lovely record and it's, it's a really humbling thought to think that I'm watched by so many people who also like to come on that journey as well. It's a really beautiful feeling so thank you to everybody who watches and appreciates these videos. I'll catch you next time. I find quite a lot of uh, religious way, tat really. Oh, it's a tiny little piece of copper wire. I give a hell of a signal. I assume that's. It gives such banging signals with that coil. Now here's something you don't see every day. I don't know whether you can see there, but I think I need a shave. Yes. Speak. I look like a terrorist. The amount of hair I've got on here. Ugh. Oh, I'm showing my godless heathen ways. Yeah, it wasn't a bad depth. Marvellous. Ah. The Nira. And if my eyesight was good enough, or I zoomed in, it would probably tell me who that saint or saint or whatever the female equivalent of a saint is. A lady? A saint? I don't know. Get in there.